Hi everyone, this is Lynn and welcome back to the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing a Happy Meal card using the Just Quillin stamp set and the frame worthy mini slimline die from Crafty Meraki. So to start with this card I'm first going to do the coloring, so therefore I sent these images out onto Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper using Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink Obsidian Black and well I'm doing some copy coloring today. So I'm working my way from darkest to lightest on each of the combinations that I want to use and I keep going back and forth until I like the blend. So most of the time with this paper for me that means at least two layers but if needed I can add many more. Something that is sometimes concerning to a lot of you is adding several layers that you have the issue of bleeding, that your marker is going outside the lines even when you don't want to, just because the paper is oversaturated and it cannot hold everything where you added it originally. Now this paper, Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper, is really a lifesaver for me and that's why I just, <laughs> I mention it all the time. It can handle quite a lot of Copics or alcohol markers in general and if you need many layers then this is a paper that you definitely want to try out um, because I have never experienced the issue of bleeding. What I do have sometimes with this paper is that it sort of doesn't take the ink anymore. That is also a way of being oversaturated for this paper and you just lay this paper aside or you use your heat gun and you let it dry and then you can go back in and add more layers if you want to. Another thing that I find really really handy is that um, you have a colorless blender <laughs> and I think it exists some sort of a colorless blender for every alcohol marker but I'm not sure, I only use Copic so far. Um, but it's a lifesaver for me because I go outside the lines all the time and this marker really helps you to push back that color and you can fix those tiny mistakes that you might did and nobody will know. So I have all of these images and still it's going to be a clean and simple card. I very often make a clean and simple card with only one image because that's more than enough. But for this card I really wanted to have a corner with lots of images and therefore I had this hedgehog that I wanted to feature and then all of this greenery to put behind and aside of the hedgehog. So that's what I'm doing. The flower I wanted to keep it really really light so I'm just using some yellow markers and I'm going to blend it out with a really really light yellow marker as well. And then I will do a second layer because that is most of the time what I need to get that blend that I want. But again, if you need more layers, depending on the color family also I need more layers, uh, this paper can handle it and that's just the beauty of it. So I'm twisting and turning the paper depending on how that can help me with the coloring. Um, everything to facilitate the blends or the end result that you like. And then for the hedgehog, I just did some really, really simple coloring. Um, here all the spikes, I am adding just two layers, well, two layers. I'm adding two markers for this combination, I want to say. Um, just the E47 and the E57, a combination that I use very often. And depending on how many markers you add to that, you have a completely different combination. So that's the beauty as well. Sometimes you can have a color combination of three markers and you can leave out two, you can leave out the darkest or the lightest, you can leave out the middle one even and do a tip to tip and you have so many new combinations at once. So I'm just adding another layer to darken it a bit more and to have those shadows over there. And as you can see, for this part of the hedgehog, it's a really subtle shadow that I have. And then I'm just fixing those mistakes with the colorless blender. How nice! So then for the rest, for the face and the paws, I am using E33, E53, E51, 
And actually these three markers can perfectly be added to the first combination of the spikes. Um, it can be added after the E47, E57 and then you have a whole range of Copics um, that can form one combination altogether. Depending on how large your image is, sometimes it's really handy to have several markers in your combination to spread the coloring of each of the markers over there. So I'm taking my time, um, as I'm going to cover quite a lot of the mushroom, I wasn't really bothered about coloring it like crazy uh, good, uh, but then I realized that the, the inside of the mushroom will however be visible on the card, so I just added a bit of that color. And now I'm taking the matching dies to cut all of these elements out, and I just love these matching dies, the berries or die cut perfectly this way, I would never be able to fussy cut that. And then it's onto my background. As I said in the beginning, I'm using the frame ready mini slimline. And when you cut out your frame, then you will also have the inside piece. And this is the inside piece that I'm just ad adding a bit of cracked pistachio and evergreen ball distress inks to. In that corner where I am going to place all of the elements as well. And I just want a soft gradient into the wide area of this panel. And the frame I will leave wide as well. Um, it will just be a lovely border with stitching details all around the card. Like that. So now onto the sentiment. Therefore I'm using the Just Quillin sentiment that is exactly the same as the title of this stamp set. Um, or the name of this stamp set. I am stamping it out onto this white area of my panel and I'm making sure to have a good impression so I'm stamping it multiple times. And once that's done we can start assembling the card. So I'm first going to add the panel on top of my card base and therefore I'm adding this frame temporarily on top of the card base. This way I can inlay the panel without worrying that the frame will be shifting while inlaying and then afterwards I can remove the frame again and add some foam on the back of this frame to play a bit with dimension. So as adhesive for the frame I am going to use the Darius foam strips. These strips are super handy if you have them in your craft room. Also really handy is when you are making shakers and you just have a frame then this is just a perfect size. Um, it's quite thick and therefore your shaker materials will move really easily and it's thin so you can have a thin frame around your shaker without any issues and it's also really handy if you want to uh, bend it a bit to go behind a circular frame or anything like that. So it's really a handy adhesive. So I'm just going to add that and then I have already played a bit with dimension, but we will add the other images as well and then um, play a bit more. So I'm first laying everything out and once I'm happy with the layout, I am going to adhere all the elements. First starting with the elements behind the hedgehog, because the hedgehog and the grass, I'm going to add a bit on the frame. So therefore I need first to add everything in the back. And that I will do with just some liquid glue and tucking it behind. And then to be on the same height as the frame, I'm going to use again the same Darius foam strips to add behind the hedgehog and the grass as well. This way it's at the same height as the frame and that would just be handy, it won't be bulked or anything like that. I'm just making sure that all the rest is adhered with some liquid glue. And then later on, I don't think that I filmed it, but behind the berries I put a little bit of a thin foam square um, to just secure it a bit better and to help it also when it goes through mail. And here, as I said, using the same height as the frame. The rest that is overlapping, I'm using a bit of liquid glue and I will also do the same with the grass. And then I can add it to my card. And you can really see this card coming together. And I love 
that the distress ink is right behind all the images. It really helps with the scenery, although it's a clean and simple card. So once I did that, I am going to embellish the card. And today I decided to use some iridescent bubbles. Um, these are just really handy embellishments. Iridescent, in my opinion, it always works. Um, because it sort of takes over the color and at the same time it gives a bit of interest because it's iridescent. And so I just added it to the panel and then this is going to be my card. You can add many more if you want to and you can add glossy accents or stickers or anything like that. But I decided to keep it like this. I want to thank you all for stopping by and taking the time for this video. I truly appreciate it. If you liked it, you can always give this one a thumbs up. And I'll be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!